Since its inception, Xbox Game Pass really has been the gift that keeps on giving, and in 2022, it looks set to add another bumper crop of games to its already bulging list. I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and in this video, I'll be taking a look at 30 games that are coming to Game Pass this year. This list counts pretty much every game that's been confirmed for Game Pass so far, starting from March onwards. And while I'm sure there will be many more announcements as we go on through the year, there's already a great selection of AAA and indie games in this list to look forward to. So pour a drink in a glass, settle down on your ass, and get ready for 10 months of glorious Game Pass. Far Changing Tides is described as an atmospheric vehicle adventure that follows the emotional journey of a boy and his ship as he embarks on a voyage to find a new home. Sounds interesting? Sure, but if this was an emotional story about a boy and his dog, you could almost guarantee that the dog would die at the end. So does that mean that in this game, the ship will die at the end? I mean, a ship's even alive in the first place? I'm no vet, but I'm pretty sure they're not. Either way, it looks lush and it's due to set sail for Game Pass on March the 1st. Welcome back to Shredageddon. Here's a new trick. Let's go! Sadly, Shredders is not a game about hastily shredding important tax documents before the FBI can break down your door and arrest you because that game sounds kind of awesome. Instead, Shredders is a snowboarding game that has, and I quote, been made for riders by riders. But what those riders have been riding isn't actually made clear in the blurb. So for all I know, this could be a game made by horse riders for bike riders. Still, those horse riders look like they've done a pretty good job here because there's a huge open world for all you bike riders to enjoy snowboarding around. So get amped up, snowboard fans, because this one should be shreddy for release sometime in the next month or so. Okay, this is good, this is good, this is really good. Holy fluttering whipwood! I once showed all of my friends at school a blue memoir and then the teacher caught me and I nearly got expelled. But I think this next game might be a little bit more safe for work than the magazine I had. So it should be okay to talk about it here without this video getting demonetized. A Memoir Blue is actually an interactive poem about a superstar athlete and the all-encompassing love between mother and daughter, and it's due to make a splash on Game Pass sometime around the end of March. What a fool. Crusader? I barely know her! But I do know Crusader Kings 3 because that game has been out since 2020, and it's already been on PC Game Pass since a point in time that I couldn't be bothered to look up. But it's probably been a while. I did, however, look up the exact date for when this excellent strategy role-playing game will be hitting Game Pass for the Series X and S, and that's March the 29th. King L, that's very soon indeed. Real strategy requires cunning. The thing about the Weird West is, it ain't kind. Flesh Eaters took your husband, killed your son cold. Time to dig up them shooting irons. Crossing fantastical creatures with the lawmen and the gunslingers of the Wild West sounds like a pretty weird concept which I guess is why the developers of Weird West called it Weird West and not, I don't know, Advanced Generic Cowboy Simulator or something. This immersive sim was made by the co-creators of Dishonored and Prey, and it'll be moseying on down to Game Pass on the 31st of March. Yeehaw! When they gather around the campfire, 
They'll speak your name and tremble. Welcome to the Weird West. Most people think that MLB stands for Major League Baseball, but it actually stands for Moobly Loobly Boobly. In Moobly Loobly Boobly The Show 22, you can help a team of nine players hit a ball with a stick that was thrown by another team of nine players who don't have a stick. Sounds a bit far-fetched if you ask me, but nevertheless, you'll be able to doobly loobly boobly that one on April the 4th. That first sight of the school gates, the scent of a leather-bound book, the faint clatter of knights jousting. Have you ever wanted to run your own campus? The answer, if you're in the UK, is probably not, because we don't really use the word campus much here. Instead, we use the word university. But Two Point University is a game that doesn't exist, so that definitely won't be graduating to Game Pass on May the 17th. Two Point Campus, however, will be. So if you want to build and manage your own universities, that's when it'll be fresh, man. Class is in session 2022. I played a demo of Scorn for Eurogamer over four years ago now, and it was absolutely rubbish. So here's hoping an extra four years of development time will have fleshed this game out a bit. In Scorn, you play as a skinless humanoid, navigating a dangerous world that looks like it was made by grabbing a person by the sphincter muscle and pulling them inside out. So if you want to see what it looks like inside someone's bomb hole, you'll get the chance sometime in October unless it's delayed for four more years. In which case, just grab a mirror and pop a squat for the same effect. What you found, it's the key to unlocking everything. We reach your constellation. This is all we've been working This next game is called Starfield. It's about space or something, but so are a lot of games, so I doubt there'll be much hype for this one. I mean, once you've seen one space game, you've seen them all really, haven't you? This one is made by Bethesda though, so maybe it'll have space dragons in it, or like, I don't know, space horses? I'd put money on the fact that there'll also be an easter egg in it where you can play the entirety of Skyrim on your ship's computer though, because at this point, why not? Prepare to blast off on November the 11th. No, what are <laughs> if you went into the heart of Chernobyl in real life, you'd develop acute radiation syndrome and you'd be dead within days, so maybe don't do that. Instead, why not wait until Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl hits Game Pass on the 8th of December, and then you can poke around anomalies to your heart's content, safe in the knowledge that the only chromosomes you'll be cooking will be those of the fictional character that you're playing as, whose name, I presume, will be like, I don't know, Dave Stalker or something. Master of mankind, grant us strength. All right, from here on out, the dates for the games hitting Game Pass will be a little less precise. And by less precise, I mean it will definitely be sometime this year, but when times this year has not yet been specified. For instance, Warhammer 40k Darktide is set to hit Game Pass in the spring, which could be any time within the next four months or so. Darkside. 
It'll be worth the unspecified wait time if you loved Vermintide though, because this is more of the same Warhammer meets Left 4 Dead action, except this time it's taking place in the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. <laughs> Spies! said the words Midnight Fight Express to anyone from the UK, they'd instantly assume that you were talking about a punch-up outside of a kebab shop in the city centre after kicking out time at the clubs. And judging by this gameplay, Midnight Fight Express the game does kind of seem like it's capturing that kind of vibe. Minus the kebabs, that is. Expect to be going brawl out with this one sometime in the summer. Redfall is an open-world, co-op, first-person shooter from Arcane that will be playable on Game Pass on PC and console from day one. When day one actually is, is anyone's guess, because currently the release date just says summer 2022. So let's hope it's not when we're all on holiday and away from our consoles, as teaming up with my mates to kick the fuck out of vampires sounds like a pretty awesome time, if you ask me. Impossible. This be the verse you crave for me. Come on, you've seen worse than this. Here he lies, where he longed to be. If you enjoyed watching innocent French children getting eaten alive by rats in a plague tale innocence, then my oh my do I have some good news for you. And also for any hungry rats who are watching. A Plague Tale Requiem is on the way to Game Pass later this year, and once again, you'll be able to guide Amicia and Hugo through a brutal, breathtaking world as they set people on fire, feed people to rats, and generally do a bunch of things that in all probability will mess those poor kids up for life. Rats entertainment, I guess. Was it fate? Coincidence? No. I accidentally typed as Duck Fools when I was writing this script, and now I'm sad that such a game doesn't exist. As Dusk Falls features one town, two families, and three decades of secrets. But as far as I can tell, there are zero ducks in it. But will this interactive drama be all it's quacked up to be? You'll find out once it hits Game Pass at an unspecified date this year. Quack. I got your letters. There was a point a couple of years ago when people thought Atomic Heart was just a hoax. The development team were a bunch of unknowns and the trailers that were released were just too good. They showed off some impossibly gorgeous gameplay that seemed to be an unearthly mix of Bioshock, Stalker and a crap load of brown acid. And they set the internet on fire with equal parts anticipation and apprehension. But it looks like Atomic Heart is the real deal after all, as this open world RPG is now set to steal our hearts on Game Pass in the latter portion of this year. You've got two days, son. Don't let me down. Bushiden is a side-scrolling indie game that looks like it might have not so slyly copied Strider's homework or at the very least, it was heavily inspired by the Strider games. Either way, if you love side-scrolling platformers with a Super Nintendo era pixel art aesthetic, this cybernetic action game should be already striding towards the top of your most wanted list. Go. 
gosh, I haven't played a point and click game since, I don't know, probably the days of the Amiga. But if anything is going to get me back into that genre, it's definitely going to be Chinatown Detective Agency. Set in the year 2032, which is by far the best year to set a game in, Chinatown Detective Agency will see you travelling across Singapore as you research mysteries, uncover clues and bop your head to its dark synthwave soundtrack. This next upcoming Game Pass game is a town-building action RPG that features 2D sprites, 3D backgrounds and a weird-ass name that I'm going to struggle to pronounce correctly. It looks like it should be Ayudan Chronicle Rising, but I actually think it might be Ayudan Chronicle Rising? Perhaps some of you folks out there who love JRPGs can correct me, because this game is definitely for Ayudan. Getting just one Frog Detective game on Game Pass would have been an excellent win for Animal Kind. But all three Frog Detective cases in one package? Well, any other developers looking at this list will want to rib it up and burn it right now, because how on earth could you compete with that? Be a frog, be a detective, be both at the same time as you attempt to solve the mystery of the haunted island, the case of the invisible wizard, and the corruption at Cowboy County. For a game that spelled the word neighbour wrong, the first Hello Neighbour was quite popular. Popular enough to earn a sequel anyway, although maybe not popular enough for the developers to look at a dictionary to find out the proper spelling of the word neighbour. In Hello Neighbour 2, you'll once again be tasked with breaking into your neighbour's house in order to gather clues and find out why the residents of Ravenbrooks are going missing. Which reminds me of that time I broke into my neighbour's house to find my sandwich that had gone missing. Turns out I'd just eaten it though, and that's a story about how I got arrested and spent four months in jail for breaking an entry. Thanks to the recent actions of our unbelievably terrible, citizen-sacrificing, money-laundering, party-throwing government, if you put your hand in a river in England right now, there's a very high chance that when you pull it back out again, you'll be holding a fistful of poo. If only people had voted differently, then maybe we could have had rivers full of loot instead of sewage, like in this game called Loot River, which features procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike action, and best of all, not one single Tory. I had a party with some animals once. The cats gave it the big urn and were all like, yeah, I'm well hard, me, I can drink loads of booze. But then they puked their guts up after only two Jaeger bombs. Horses, on the other hand, absolute beasts. Those hoof-having heroes went full fear and loathing in Las Vegas and put my puny human liver to shame. Unlike that party though, the party animals that's heading to Game Pass this year isn't about imbibing copious amounts of alcohol. Although a couple of beers might help add an extra layer of hilarity to this physics-based brawler that is quite obviously inspired by gang beasts. Some of you watching this video may have noticed that I've not been taking things too seriously when it comes to describing the games on this list, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that I am once again taking the piss when I tell you that Pigeon Simulator is a real game that's coming to Game Pass at some point this year. 
It's a wacky sandbox simulator, a bit like 2014's Goat Simulator, except this time you can poo in people's food, breathe fire from your beak, or turn into a giant pigeon and just go around smashing things up. Coo blimey, this one looks odd. Whenever I write scripts like this one here, Aoife tells me that I'm super close to getting replaced. Luckily, I'm the only one who has the keys to the office though, so if they do try to get rid of me, I'm locking everyone out of the building and claiming the Eurogamer website as my own. And then it'll just be Jorts News and Dizzy coverage from then on out. But hopefully I can at least last until Replaced arrives on Game Pass, because this cinematic cyberpunk platformer with gorgeous pixel art and free flow action looks absolutely immense. Could do with more jorts though. If you love sci-fi survival horror games, you're in for a treat with this next upcoming indie game for Game Pass. This is Signalis, a haunting, melancholic mystery set in a surreal retro-tech world full of mind-bending puzzles and nightmarish creatures. If you don't love sci-fi survival horror games though, you might want to avoid this one because it'll probably make you do a fear poo in your pants. Slime Rancher 2 is the sequel to Slime Rancher 1, a game about owning a ranch where you breed slime. I just wrote that line without even looking up what Slime Rancher actually was, so uh, let's see if I got that right. Yep, it says here that Slime Rancher is the tale of Beatrix LeBeau, who tries her hand at making a living wrangling slimes. So I'm guessing Slime Rancher 2 is more of the same then. Yep, exactly the same, except this time Beatrix is going somewhere called Rainbow Island? Well, let's just see what Bobby and Bobby have to say about that. Did you enjoy shooting Nazis in the testicles in Sniper Elite 4? If you answered yes to that question, then stand by to shoot more Nazis in the testicles in Sniper Elite 5, but this time the testicles will have slightly more detail to them. That's right, Carl Fairburn is back and this time he's taking his bollock popping antics to France, where he joins attempts to put a stop to a secret Nazi project called Operation Kraken. Ha, huh. well, those Nazis are definitely going to get a swift Kraken around their ball bags, that's for sure. What happens next could change the course of the war. I've caused a lot of catastrophes in my time, but thankfully I've managed to avoid starting a large-scale conflict. For now at least. Still, you can see what it would be like to live through the wake of a catastrophe in Somerville, a handcrafted sci-fi adventure about a family who are attempting to unravel the mysteries of some spooky alien visitors. The game takes place amongst the backdrop of a vivid rural landscape, and it looks like it'll deliver scares and feelings in equal measure. Hiroki. 
I didn't know anything about the final game on this list, so I looked it up on Steam and it says that Trek to Yomi contains violent combat with blood and beheading. So that's me sold. Obviously, it looks lovely too, what with the visuals being inspired by classic black and white samurai films, and the gameplay looks something like a side scrolling Sekiro. So, if you're hungering after some hardcore sword on sword combat, you should find this one very yomi indeed. And that, my Game Pass curious friends, is that. Those were 30 upcoming Game Pass games that we think you should definitely keep an eye out for. But which one do you want to play the most? Let us know in the comments below, like this video, subscribe to Eurogamer, and most importantly of all, keep being awesome, you beautiful being you. Goodbye. <laughs>